nothing but this one. This one's going to go really, really quick for you guys. My name is Mark Kegel. I'm a software engineer at a company down in Austin, but I work remotely. I, uh, you guys can kind of think of me as a data engineer. I know that was a term that we introduced. 80% of my job is getting models into production. And that's mostly what I want to do. But what I, what I want to talk to you guys tonight about is, uh, is sort of an impassioned plea. There's lots and lots of tools that data scientists use every single day. But the most important one that you're going to be using is the language that you're actually writing code in. Because you're going to take all of these fancy mathematical models and you need to get it into something that actually crunches the bits and that's going to be the language that you're choosing. The data scientists that I work with universally have chosen to work in Python. Now Python is a wonderful language. It operates very, very quickly. It has uh, a great uh, multi-platform story. Uh, a great uh, performance optimization story and then you can call down into C. What I want to do is introduce you guys to the wonders of Scala and plead with you, please consider learning another language, this one, Scala. Because I guarantee you'll love it. So you probably already know a bit about Scala because you've heard of things like Java and Spark. So Scala is uh, another language on top of the JVM, very similar to Java uh, in that it runs on the JVM. Beyond that, it, uh, it brings a much more concise, principled focus on how to program. And we'll talk a little bit about that once we get down to language features. But if you're going to be working in Spark, the lingua franca of Spark is Scala. So please consider using it for that reason if you want to do Spark-like stuff. Uh, you may have heard of Akka as a really popular framework for doing like massively uh, parallel clusters and that kind of thing. Also, that's it works really, really well in Scala. So the feature the features of the language, I have seven minutes, so I can't show you uh, a full language introduction. If you want to go buy a book, do something like that. But the, the principles of the language are basically that it's scalable. That's actually where the name itself comes from. The important qualities of the language itself, uh, especially as compared to things like Python, are that it's multi-paradigm. It's not a language that tries to, to put itself in a corner uh, it, what it really tries to do is offer you all of the building blocks that you need to write really, really powerful, concise, expressive code. So, for example, uh, a lot of the functional programming people, like if you come from a Haskell background, oh my god, you're going to throw your hands up and say, no, 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 we can't have objects. But objects are a great way to describe and model data. You guys are data scientists, you want to model data. Scala is really good about having strong object-oriented principles. But on the other hand, all of the academics out there are going to say, but you know, what about immutability? Because that makes concurrency better. Well, Scala brings in a lot of this academic research because it actually brings in really, really strong functional programming principles and primitives into the language itself. And it, it's probably the, the cleanest, most elegant combination of these ideas that I have ever seen. And if you want to see a language that is just really well done, both mathematically grounded and productive, Scala is it. Uh, one of the qualities of the language is that it's type safe. So unlike Python, where you can assign strings to ints and do all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, your variables will stay the same type uh, from the time that you bind them. This is a good thing, because for somebody like me, when we go to production and your code blows up, well, at least it compiled. And that helps. Eliminate what class errors. Yeah. Yeah, you, you write off entire classes of errors, which is really, really helpful. Uh, just to tick them off, that, you know, it's high performance, runs on the JVM. The JVM is at hundreds of man years of effort, runs really, really fast, if you don't do silly things, but you can do silly things in any language. Uh, the concurrency, it really is massively parallel. So I'm sure anybody that's written Python has run into the global interpreter lock where you can only have a single thread. You can have millions of threads if you really, really want in Scala, or actors as they end up being called because they're sort of lightweight threads. Um, the biggest thing, and I think the thing that's actually most important for data scientists, is the, the conciseness and expressivity of the language. So we're going to see a little bit of Scala later on, but Scala is just as concise as R, Python, Julia, or any of the other languages out there while retaining type safety. I think this is really, really important. Uh, it's data friendly. So it's not only data friendly in that uh, it talks with Java and it thinks about classes and all of that. Uh, it tries to be concise about the data that it's talking about. Going into that would be, well, more than seven minutes. 
And the thing that makes me happy is that it's production friendly. It really is something that you can put into production and it's stable. So in terms of getting things done, that's uh, a lot of what I hear about when I, I hear about languages and stuff like that. You know, is there an ecosystem that I can build my software on? And the answer with Scala is absolutely, because you have access to the entire framework of, of Java and every single library and framework that has ever been written for the JVM. You can pull it in, you can use it, you can put it into production tomorrow. And not only, so like I'm listing out here, these are data platforms. And that's actually what most of what you guys are going to care about. But when you start interfacing with the rest of the enterprise, now there are all sorts of other platforms and libraries that you need to pull in. Stuff like, hey, JSON. Well, you need a nice uh, platform for doing web services. We have 15 of those. You need good libraries for high performance JSON serialization. But again, we have 15 of those, for better or worse. Uh, but the point is, you have this entire ecosystem that you can draw from. But not only are those libraries uh, production grade, you have production quality data platforms and uh, libraries as well. So that's sort of like at scale. The thing that I'm actually using for this presentation is a data notebook. The data scientists that I work with don't just hop into IntelliJ or Eclipse and start banging out code. What they're actually doing is using data notebooks. That's what this is. So this is one that you may not have seen before, and I changed the theme to kind of hide what it was. This is a data notebook called Beaker. Beaker is a multi-language data notebook that speaks Python, but also speaks Scala. It's really, really cool. In fact, it speaks all of these languages that I have listed out here. So if you're a data scientist, and you want to start experimenting with Scala, you now have a day-to-day -day way to do it. Just pull down Beaker. It's a simple app to install. You get it set up in the web browser, and you're good to go. Uh, except for installing the Scala, Scala stuff, but that's really quick and easy. What's really cool about Beaker is that you can share data between the different language platforms. So if you have this really neat idea that you, know, you just can't express in Python, well, put it into the Beaker object, pull it out in Scala, and do magic with it, because you can do that right here on your desktop. Uh, just go through. Yes, speaker handles graphics, woo. But of course, the magic in this sauce is that Beaker supports Spark. So now you have all of the power of Scala, and you can access your Spark cluster from your data notebook. Woot, really, really cool. And anybody that's paying attention, these are the standard Spark uh, examples that they just ship with. I didn't come up with anything interesting. Something a little bit unexpected about Scala, and I really think that this is where Scala is going to like continue gaining momentum. Uh, Scala is also already by far the most popular functional programming language out there. It is going to become more popular because you can literally do the full stack in one language. Now, I don't mean full stack in like the web development full stack where you have LAMP or MEAN or anything like that. I mean, you can actually write Scala and have it compiled to performant JavaScript that is type safe all the way through. You can write everything in your app in one language and have it all just be seamless. More than that, you can actually have uh, native code with the thing announced, God, just two months ago. Uh, it's called Scala Native. Check it out. Really, really awesome. This is going to revolutionize in some ways, uh, not a lot of ways, uh, how Scala is perceived by the community. So I, I, uh, one of the groups that I attend very frequently is the, the local chapter of Scala enthusiasts. We're actually going to have our, our next meetup on Thursday. So we are uh, basically a bunch of folks who really, really get excited about Scala. And what we are looking for you, this is a you know, my plea is, is please consider using, using Scala. We actually have a request for you guys. Uh, we would love to hear about Spark from a data scientist who uh, uses it day to day or is at least very familiar with it. And I see <laughs> figures being pointed. Uh, if you're up to the task and would love, love to come talk to us, please shoot me an email at mark.keel.com. Thank you. Any questions? Yes? So I'm a big fan of Scala as well, and last time I was coding, I was using the Zeppelin notebook. 
Can you tell me the difference between Beaker and Zeppelin? Uh, I, I tried to check out Zeppelin, uh -huh. and what I found is that it just hasn't received a lot of momentum, whereas Beaker was very quick to grab, did everything that I wanted it to, just easier to use. Okay. So Zeppelin but, has uh, a list of interpreters, about 12 or 15 interpreters. Yes. It speaks Python, it speaks Java, Scala, uh, and, uh, everything. most of the things you mentioned. So yeah. we'll you say you can, can you call one? One module from Python, call it in Scala, and vice versa? Is that no. What is he, what is he, what's the difference between that and a file system? This is as much as I've done with Beaker. Uh, but what it is doing is it's running a service in the background. So it's detecting the calls that you're making off to the Beaker object. So this object right here named Beaker, uh, in each environment they inject a little bit of magic. So like in Python, too, because you have the under under dict methods, you can detect what it is you're doing to an object. So they generate some magic off in the background, detect when you're writing to a key in that store, and then that goes in as serialized data to the back end service. And then any other beaker object, in this, in this instance, the one that's in Scala, can then detect that you're trying to read data from it, go to the beaker service, pull the data back out. So the data that you're serializing between has to be more or less standard. 